I've been on the search for the perfect daily workhorse mechanical SLR camera for quite a while, and the Nikon FM series of cameras has always been one that's interested me, and it's kind of just sat on my wish list for a really long time. That is until recently. I finally got myself a Nikon FM, and as soon as I got it in my hands, this camera had me absolutely convinced. It's easily one of the best mechanical cameras that you can buy. It's also one of my favorite SLRs, and quite possibly the best SLR I've ever handled. So in 1977, Nikon brought the FM series of cameras onto the market as the replacement to the Nikormat FT3 and as a replacement to the Nikormat series of cameras altogether as their new for the time amateur series of cameras. I think if the camera was marketed today, it would probably be sold as a prosumer camera. The original FM was sold from 1977 all the way until 1982 when it was replaced with the FM2. And that FM nameplate carried all the way into the early 2000s. It was quite a long lived line of cameras and it was designed to slot underneath of Nikon's professional bodies. At the time of the launch of the original one, which I have here, that would be the Nikon F2. The original FM is an all metal, all mechanical camera that is made out of a copper aluminum alloy, at least for the most part, and weighs about 590 grams without a lens attached. The camera features a all mechanical, so no batteries required, metal vertical focal plane shutter that can fire from speeds ranging from one thousandth of a second all the way down to one second. The camera also features a built-in light meter that requires two LR44 batteries. It's a 60-40 split center weighted average meter that can be set to ISO or ASA ranging from 3200 all the way down to 12. The viewfinder on this camera is also quite good in terms of specs with a 0.86 magnification and 93% coverage of the 35 millimeter image area. Unsurprisingly, the camera also features an F mount, which is compatible with an absolutely massive catalog of lenses. You need AI lenses, at least in order to be able to use all the functions within the camera. Although the camera can be set to use stop down metering. There are a handful of exceptions, of course, that you can't use with this camera, even though they're F mount lenses. The invasive fisheye lenses, for example, with the protruding rear lens element can damage the mirror mechanism inside of the camera, so they shouldn't be mounted at all. I doubt that there will ever come a point in time where I stop talking about how amazing this camera is to have in hand. It feels like an absolute tank. Probably bulletproof, not really, but it feels amazing. I've had this camera with me for just a little bit over a month, and so far I've put a couple of rolls of film through it, and I enjoyed every single photo that I took with this camera. The control layout is a standard affair for SLRs of this sort of design, and that's a good thing, I like it. We have our film rewind, which is pretty normal. It's got a little release catch on here, so you can't lift it unless you're at the same time pulling on that tab, prevents you from accidentally opening it, and then there's no film inside right now. That closes up. On top of the pentaprism, we have a shoe mount with a flash trigger point. I always forget what these things are called. I love that this camera has a full information viewfinder. So inside of the viewfinder, in addition to being able to see the light meter LEDs for the light meter readout, you can also see your shutter speed indicated inside of the viewfinder and your aperture. We have our shutter speed dial, which is marked for the speeds 1000 down to one second with a bulb mode, as well as the adjustment for the ISO setting for the built-in light meter from 3200 all the way down to 12 ISO. We have our shutter button, which is a locking shutter release. And I think every camera in the world ever made should have a locking shutter release. And I'm really glad this one has one. So there you go, locked, nothing happens. Unlock it, you can fire, it's threaded as well. The frame counter is down here. And then we have our film advance. Now this one here has kind of a locked position like this, and then you can pull it out to that first kind of click position and when it's pulled out like this the light meter is on inside of the camera and reading the scene when it's closed like this it is not on and not using battery that's nice film advance feels nice as well 
The light meter is a center the dot or center the light type light meter, so not too dissimilar from center the needle style light meters. I used exclusively the 50mm f1.4 Nikkor AI lens on this camera because it's the only lens that I have for the F mount at the moment, although I am very excited about all the other glass that is available for this system. Here, now this button is a double exposure button, so if you press that and then advance the film, it will recock the shutter without advancing the film along the carrier inside so you can do double exposures with this camera really really easily moving around to the front of the camera we have an automatic timer down here we have a depth of field preview the F mount release button for when you need to remove the lens and the flash sync port. And while I found that the controls on this camera were very easy to reach and were pretty much right where my fingers were most of the time anyway, especially the depth of field preview, I found that I was using that all the time and having it just under my finger there was really, really good. The one thing that kind of drove me nuts a little bit at the beginning was the fact that the automatic timer switch was always right underneath my fingers and I was constantly moving that knob or that crank just a little bit and it would cause the camera to make a bit of a buzzing sound as the automatic timer mechanism was getting slightly activated by accident along the bottom again fairly standard affair we've got battery door threaded tripod mount and the release catch for when we need to rewind the film and the contact points here for the different motor drives that are compatible with this camera and then on the back we just have our little carrier frame for the tab of a film box. I had some Tri-X 400 in here earlier. Overall, this is a fairly standard affair for SLRs like this, but this one just feels fantastic. It sits in my hands absolutely perfectly. Did I also mention that the shutter sounds absolutely fantastic? Just the sounds and the haptics of using this camera are absolutely awesome. I don't know if that really matters to you or not, but it does to me and I absolutely, I love the way that this camera sounds and the way it feels and using it is just fantastic. All in all though, however, the shooting experience with the Nikon FM is absolutely fantastic. This is an almost perfect SLR and I look forward to shooting many more rolls of film with this camera. The Nikon FM is such a complete SLR package that in my opinion, it's kind of hard to beat. It's become my favorite. SLR, and I think the only camera that could maybe take this position away from it for me personally would be the Nikon F2, which brings a 1 2,000th of a second maximum shutter speed, which would be nice, as well as interchangeable viewfinders and interchangeable focusing screens, which you can't do on the Nikon FM. You can't even change out the focusing screen. But considering how much more expensive the F2 is on the used market, sometimes even double where I live anyway, I'm going to be sticking to the FM. Now the F FM series of cameras, the FM had its line of successors and they all brought little tweaks and features to the camera. The original one is my favorite and I think they got a lot of things right, right off the bat. And I think that's evidenced by the fact that for the most part, Nikon stuck to the original formula with the Nikon FM. It's a really, really fantastic, well-featured, well-rounded and durable, reasonably priced SLR. And in my opinion, it's about as good as an SLR can get. That's all that I have to say for now. Thanks so much for watching. Please like this video if you think I've deserved it. Subscribe if you think I've earned it, and I will see you next time.